You are listening to the questionnaire. Say that again. You're listening to the questionnaire. I've just started right here for your ears, for your eyes. The questionnaire. Get your comic on. Pog it up, pog it up, pog it up, pog it up. Let's start this show before I contemplate overbooking myself any more than I already am. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. The cops? Firefighters? Butcher? The mayor? High school gym teacher? I mean, we've had a lot of people over here, but I don't think there's ever been anyone to that effect. But in this particular episode, well, it's a pan con. Ladies and gentlemen, so you know it's a little packed, a little bit, a little here, a little there, a little couple things from everywhere, man. It's, I love it. I do. I, I love these pan cons so much as far as the actual, you know, having these conversations. But I won't, we won't get into everything else, man, because this is the questionnaire, and I am the unknown factor, like I said, you know, so, uh, we're just, just going to cut right into it, we might have another individual joining us at a later point in time, but right now, right, for the first, man, he, he was just with us, with Nip Marikovich, right, and chatting it up about everything he's got going on, right, Alan Henry in the house. What up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then we'll go with the, uh, the gentleman that introduced I made it to where Alan Henry's actually been on this show twice, right? That being Scott Wojak. What's going on, Scott. guys? Yeah. Then, uh, let me see. I'm trying. I'm trying to think. That's, wait, is that really so? So, Alan, you've been on the show three times now. Scott, this is your fourth, excluding the one that technically, because there was a tech issue, and right? Yeah. So, technically three that people can see, because I can't even go back and review the other episode. But it's funny, nope, because this is... This is my fifth, then. Oh, wait, because, duh, you were with Michael. Yeah. yeah. Look, man, we're running a lot of shows over <laughs> here. It's been phenomenal. I hope you've been enjoying it, right? But I was thinking it was three, three, and three, because I was thinking Hannibal Taboo. It's your third time on, is it not? Uh, I don't remember stuff that happened today, but I do remember being here twice before, so maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough, man. Yeah, but I thought it was, but I, it's okay, Hannibal, as far as the not remembering stuff today, because look, I'm trying to say Scott's only been on three times when he's been on for his initial interview that had a tech issue, the interview that we did when he came back on, and then he's been on for a pan con, and then he was just on with Michael Oming as a co-host, and so, yeah, I, I get it. Hannibal, right? I was no. told this was going to be an open book test. That's what I was told, so I'm not ready. <laughs> No, dude, we don't, we don't, I... I didn't you see me just toss a book, man? Come on now, all right. <laughs> this is all just prep for the math required for D and D. That's what's going. Oh on. man, <laughs> <laughs> roll for initiative. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what did I get myself into? Right, I gotta, I gotta see because I know. No, that's who I had the conversation with. It was Dave Milburn. Yeah, chilling up at Mage's Comics where we were talking about how long a game of D and D would be, and that's why I shouldn't do it. Yeah, yeah, we did talk about that last week, I believe. That wasn't last week. That was a couple weeks ago. Was the it the D&D thing? Man, I've slept since then. The D&D thing, look, everybody here has terrible memories, and that's just how it is. We have a lot of conversations. You should take here. notes. I... Okay, yeah, I got notes. Okay. Scott. <laughs> <laughs> like, the only one, like, like, everybody's bringing notes, man. What is that? I... The only note I ever bring is the pre-show questionnaires if it's somebody that's been on for the first time. You can actually go see everyone's pre-show questionnaire over at the Patreon just to point that out for all y'all. But today, we're going to get on the effect that comics and TV and film have on one another. Because I don't think it's something that people ever truly, truly look at. How much one affects the other in so many levels. And I'm not... When I say that, I want to be clear. I'm not talking financially. I mean, I mean purely in the, uh, the terms of the stories that get told in all of them. You know, I mean, I can't think of how many different tellings of Star Wars there are from how many different people that have titled different things, put different places, and, and all of this. So let's start with the man that is on the film side of things, right? And I'm curious, Alan, you, you're, you, you're a self-proclaimed nerd, and, and we all are, let's be honest. I don't think there's anybody in this room that's not a nerd, uh, right? 
And, you know, you do what you do, you know, everything within the film industry. You've had the chance to even work on some Marvel and DC films. How much do you see those works affecting one another as far as just story and how they're oriented? Oh, good question. Um, <clears throat> it's my experience working on those films has always been using comic and graphic novel imagery as foundations for for character design and not just for static images as well but uh for instance when we started working on the the avengers timeline we looked at some of those iconic iron man poses to then try and extrapolate why he was in those poses and what kind of movement was informing those poses so a lot of his like braced leg chest forward um and the way that the way that he's using the repulsive blasts from his hands you draw the you you can draw from that and go okay well obviously he's bracing himself against pushback from those from those beams so that's going to affect how he how he moves and how he works like the iconic shape he takes when he has arms down and he's taking off it's because they've looked at the way that the structure would work if there was all that force being pushed out from the various boots and repulses and whatever. And so you, you, you drew, we drew from there when we looked at the movement styles, because you're, we, you know, we were trying to make the film, the silhouette of the film characters as iconic as the silhouette from the comics or the graphic novel. And I have been involved in certain other film franchises that were definitely pointing towards merchandise sales and so what we were given in terms of costuming or creature suits or uh, limitations around what we do digitally in mocap was based on the knowledge that they were going to be building action figures and posable maquettes and statuettes and so it's a bit of back and f in my experience it's a bit of back and forth I have seen established media inform the work that we do and i've seen in the work that we do inform future media especially now that we have wetter workshop here in new zealand creating statues and maquettes and all sorts for merchandise so it's it goes it's very much a two-way street here in new zealand at least anyway i just thought you gave me a click track that's i i thought you were about to rap or <laughs> yeah yeah Things that I mean, I, I never have done anything on the show, but we are trying to keep it friendly. And especially when I'm freestyling, I have a tendency to use profanity. So we're not going to go about that, right? If you all do want to check out a little bit of something that I actually am on, I will say check out Michael Oming's uh, quest that just dropped. And there's a little bit of a teaser for my brother, Mr. DKB's upcoming album for the track Blue Book, which it amazes me that we had that track just chilling and ready. And then we ended up and it just, it, it worked out perfectly. It, it amazes me, right? It, like how it worked. But yeah, we, I put a little teaser at the beginning and at the end of that, you know, because it fit right in because Michael's dropping that Blue Book, right? But we're going to get right back into this. Sorry about <laughs> that quick cut wherever I decided to put it because... Whatever, that's how I do. So, Hannibal, man, what's your what's your opinion on that, right, as far as what you've seen back and forth-wise from those two mediums? Well, it's interesting from where I stand in uh, a predominantly comic space. Uh, I've seen a lot of things informed by... Um, there's a very common story that says somebody comes to comics. They really want to tell this story, but they didn't really want to tell this comic. They really wanted to make a movie or they really wanted to make a TV show, but they couldn't get the funding. So they make a comic as a proof of concept and put it out. And sometimes the story works in the medium, sometimes it doesn't. Everything's not made for everything. Um, I've seen- Right, uh, a number of projects. Projects. Yeah, exactly. I've seen a number of projects that, you know, where you really, somebody's really passionate about telling the story, but they wanted to tell essentially a film story and a comics medium. So there's lots of long, thoughtful pauses that don't really suit there's not not a lot of visual storytelling that features features 
the uh, abilities of what's happening there. And that can be, frankly, subpar. Um, I've also seen uh, a lot of people who, uh, there's a famous story that I remember, uh, Reggie Hudlin talks about the fact that he went into movies because he couldn't get anybody in Marvel Comics to call him back. So he made House Party and he made Boomerang and he made, you know, so. <laughs> Uh, that it was, uh, he was like, they won't let me make comics, so I guess I'll go do something else, I guess. Uh, well, I do appreciate yeah. that he made House Party. That was one of my favorites back in the back in high yeah, school. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So there are there are benefits that come from the relationship and the back and forth, but there are also costs. Um, I definitely know, because I just finished watching um, uh, X-Men 97 that came out tonight, and they did such a speed run through the Goblin Queen and I was like, whoa, okay, we, we're, we're hitting a whole lot yeah. of things in 30 minutes, player. I mean, hit the brakes a little bit. And they're like, nope. And they're, so, yeah, they um, definitely did. I don't necessarily mind it, but it's it's interesting to see. It's like when somebody's like, all right, look, we got this stack of comics and we got this many episodes. Let's hit the road and we're going to do what they can, say can't be done. Um I get it. Uh, there, there can be different influences to play different ways, but in general, I'm, I'm always, I always ask, what is the right container for the story? Uh, uh, one of one of the people I work with says, "What's the problem we're trying to solve?" So, if you have a story that's very um, thoughtful and moody, maybe it's a TV show. Take some time, let it breathe, you know. Uh, or if you have, you know, a, a, an action spectacle that has amazing visual things that are very technical, that's definitely a movie, you know, give me something where I can be astonished on the screen. But comics is a different mix of those things. And you can look at comics, people have you like, for example, if you look at 300, or if you look at uh, uh, Sin City, or if you look at uh, Watchmen, all of which basically use the comics as storyboards. Um, but storyboards are not comics, and comics are not movies. So there has right. to be some give and take in there where people have room for interpretation. Certain people will have greater skills in one than another that may not translate. Uh, so that those are all things to consider that, that I've seen, because I've seen those things all go really well, and I've seen those things all go really poor. Well, we've got the opinion of an actor and one writer. We'll get to the other writer first. I want to get to the individual who's more of a fan. I mean, you also you work as far as in a comic book store, Dave. So I can imagine you hear a lot from a lot of different people as far as on every topic, man. Do you hear a lot of things as far as people making comparisons to that in the store? Uh, yeah. Uh, whether it's uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League, uh, people coming in and going, I want to see this. And then I go, well, here's you know Justice League or wonder woman or whatever and then they come back and they go why isn't wonder woman slaughtering people and i'm like well she doesn't do that and they're like well she did in that movie and i'm like that yeah well more of a more of a batman situation because batman killed like 66 people and that bat you know <laughs> batman versus uh superman and but i mean that also went all the way back to the 89 batman uh batman was pulling out machine guns and blew up the acme uh a chemical warehouse in that um and that was because it, it was directly influenced by frank miller's dark knight returns uh, up to that time batman was a kind of a blue and gray suit and you know dark knight returns comes out it's all black and they say hey let's make him all black uh costume and let's have him kill people and he does he has a tank that blows stuff up and so they got away with it, but it was really good storytelling. They didn't take directly Dark Knight and turn it into a movie. Like uh, Hannibal was saying, it's not a storyboard. Here's some ideas. Taking the ideas is good. Trying to copy it word for word, not always uh, a good uh, combination. But yeah, I mean, you know, you'd like to see more people watch uh, a movie and it takes off and they come in. They want to buy comics related to that. Um, sometimes it's a bonus. Uh, sometimes it's difficult. Um, you know, the last Doctor Strange movie came out and people came in to say, hey, I want to read something about Doctor Strange. Well, you can't right now because he's dead. Because um, <laughs> it was you know, it's a, it's like, well, I'd love to hook you up with something. But uh, they just killed Doctor Strange just in time for the movie to come out. And they're like, well, what, what are you doing here? Yeah, so 
that can make things difficult at, at times. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah. I can see that being a little tricky. And it's funny because I think it's something that we got into uh, Alan last night with, or with Nick, um, as far as the fact that you see, like, look, Game of Thrones happened, right? Like the series, the TV series, that, that the book sales went up. All right. Not that they weren't already selling well, but when Game of Thrones happened, the book series, the, like, they just, they got higher numbers, right? You don't see that translate like that for the comic book market. I find it very, very odd. Scott, what's your opinion on what I just said? Like, oh, why? no, it's, it, you definitely can see that happening, right? Um, well, you guys know, I, I didn't even get into comics until 15 years ago, maybe, right? I knew, you know, the X-Men and stuff like that back in back in the early 2000s but i never was collecting and i wasn't reading them it wasn't until marvel cinematic universe is when i started actually reading now at the start it was mostly you know marvel stuff and then it wasn't until later that i started reading the dc stuff um and you can really see a difference between the marvel and dc tv and movies too Right. And how they have influenced. And you're you're seeing uh, corporations control how it's going to go. Right. Like Warner Brothers. I know I shouldn't say that name, but hey, hold on <laughs> real, real quick Scott, yeah, no, no. and start right where you were talking. I just realized something. My ding is sometimes that's my problem. All right. Ha, there you go. Yeah. Proceed. <laughs> Warner Brothers, they um, they have their hands all over everything that's happening, right? Whereas Disney allows Kevin Feige to come in and drop 20 movies and say, this is where I'm going with it. Are you okay with it? Yes. Okay. Don't touch me. Let me do it and let me do it the way it should be done, right? And I think that that's where the issue is kind of lied between the two big big name companies right and you've got now james gunn and i can't remember the other gentleman that's that's helping him out but it sounds like their warner brothers is gonna give them like yeah go ahead and do it right so i i think that that's that's been a big influence on anyone that's never read a comic that watches the movie or watches the show and comes in with well, dave you've probably seen it Actually, we've talked about it with Walking Dead. People come in and they're like, Walking Dead's a comic book, right? People don't even yeah. know. So, that, uh, yeah, that hurts. I know. It's so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> now now it's uh, Invincible is the new one for that. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, where people are like, oh, man, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys have got Invincible. They're making a comic of it. And it's just like, it came out before Walking Dead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, by the same person. <laughs> but, yeah, by the same person. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, see that quite often. Uh, but, it, hey, it, it gets if they come into the store and they buy something, you know, or gets them interested in reading, it's a bonus. Um, but yeah, it's, and, uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Like, and most of, like, I, I've been writing for 20 years. I wasn't doing anything with it. I, it literally sat in my back pocket. I wasn't doing anything with it. It wasn't until I started reading comics that I was like, whoa, this is where I want to take my books, right? Take my stories that my kids and I have created and that and publish them. And that's, I think that's also an influence from, you know, not just the movies, but the books themselves too, right? You, you watch the movies, you buy the books and then you get influenced on doing other stuff. Yeah, I, I definitely think that's true. And I definitely think um, there's, there's been several, so many points by all of y'all made there. Like, I think it's funny. Like, because Alan, you bring up the whole, how they use the artwork in a lot as far as like, and I and it, when you said that, I want to point out all that, all that popped in my head was that Civil War cover of Cap and Iron Man. And, and they literally, yeah, the, yeah, the, the shield and, and him blasting his repulsor rays. And they literally pan and it's like, Here's that cover. Like, yeah, to, to precise, iconic, yeah. yeah, like just, I, like I, I don't think they could have recreated it any better. 
Do you think in doing that, that perhaps they focus more, or at least some companies do, on the art as opposed to the story? Like they just look at it, and not that the art itself isn't a story, but you have to pay attention to the words as well, or you're not getting everything. You think there are cases in that where they just find things and they're like, oh, well, this did really well, so, and oh, well, let's just kind of go off of this, and they don't focus as much on the actual character development. Warner Brothers. I'm sorry. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to get anybody they're... from DC on this show. I've just come to the conclusion, like, like it's just not going to happen. <laughs> uh, you know what? They did it with Thor. Love and Thunder. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they grabbed that uh, God of Thunder run and took 30 issues and put it into a two hour movie. And it, I mean, you got a yeah. God killer who doesn't kill gods. Right? Yeah. He killed one. One. And then, yeah, at the very beginning, yeah. you know, oh. and then we don't see him kill another one. The rest of the, I wanted Olympus to be destroyed. I wanted yeah. to see a bloodbath. <laughs> I wanted to see him walk in and like, Hey, we're going to go get Zeus some help or get help from Zeus and walk in and everyone's dead. That, is what I wanted to see. Yeah. Instead, I got horrible acting by you know, Russell Crowe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. New Zealanders, we don't, we don't really talk about Love and Thunder. Sorry, uh, <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, you, you got Alan over here. Yeah. Like, I can't join in on this conversation. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. It's it's fine. Like, like, I have been involved in numerous terrible pieces of art. And not just even, not just in motion capture and film, like, you know, being a young artist and a young theater actor and a young, you know, short film actor. I've been involved in some things that were not good, but um, I think, I think a lot of, like, I think it's, sometimes it doesn't have to be. I think if you're going to, if you're going to wave around the the MCU flag and claim that you're the best director in the world, then yeah, I think, I think you definitely should mm -hmm. try and make if you're the best, if you're going to call yourself one of the best directors, you should probably make one of the best films. And um, there are a number of people who haven't reached that mark. Um, but you know, I, I think there's there's a there's a lot to be said about, you know, who who is taking that creative control. Yeah, because I've 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 worked on multiple films with the same with with the uh, the same director through all of them, and the choices made about aesthetic and like the style book and who's making you know design choices differs with every film and sometimes the director gets to choose and sometimes the studio chooses and sometimes you know sometimes weird kind of nepotism slash cronyism comes into play and it's just such a it's such a mixed bag of you know wild options and you know i think I think I think I think Dan Levy had it right when he when he did an interview about Shit's Creek when he was just like, no one knows what they're doing. None of us do. Yeah. So we're oh. all just making it up. Yeah. We're all just it's making it up. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, except wrong. for Kevin Feige, that guy's <laughs> that guy's been on fire. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I can't argue yeah. that within the MCU. I mean, you can't argue it just really based that much on. Um, just the popularity of it in its entirety. But I do think, I mean, I don't know if you could say on, on, I mean, look, um, there are several films recently that have gotten just slammed publicly that have come out of the yeah. MCU. I'm not going to sit mm -hmm. here and going back and forth to Bush and, and all of that. Everybody, I would assume people watching know, but I thought a lot of them were giving, given the credit they were due. Um, in, in a lot of ways, this is you can see me and Aletha get into this on a past pan con as far as beginning to the very much specifics of the the what the Eternals, uh, Ant Man Quantum Minium, or Ant Man and Wasp Quantum and um, the Marvel, the Marvels. Thank Marvel. you, Hannibal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was extremely yeah, Marvel's good. got an 85 on Rotten Tomatoes right now from the audience, but when it came out, it was like a 60, you know, it's like. It, the movie hadn't even come out yet and people were panning it. And it's like, you guys don't have any idea what you're talking about. Mm. Uh, it was just a bunch of haters is what mm, I was yeah. about. 
Have you experienced yeah, yeah. that, Alan? Where like you're like, you're you're doing something yeah. and it just gets a negative response before it's even done just because of what it is? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's always there's uh, we're such a and the planet is such a we're such a global community now that you know that any random person from the middle of nowhere has the has the capability to enter into your space and in and and interact and influence your your work and you like it's going it's going to happen there's there's you can't you can't limit free speech i mean you should definitely limit like hate speech for sure but oh yeah i've i've been involved in people have found out that i've been working on certain projects and been very negative as though i made the decision to make the project you know like like, like there have been there have been instances where people have criticized my choice to work with certain people and my choice is choosing not to starve and be homeless like yeah. that's my choice i got a i got i signed a contract i turn up i do my job i get paid i leave there's all all the stuff around the dubious decisions about who gets hired or who is in charge i don't get to make those choices so i can't i can't take responsibility for it i can try and make some change from the inside i guess but um yeah like the, i think i think there are you know people there are people who have some real issues with a lot of things and if i can if i can affect that or influence it or change it then by all means i will try i will try to make things better but for a lot of the stuff like you know i don't i don't choose who gets to direct love and thunder that's not my job so I would, yeah <laughs> i'm i'm pretty sure that if you got to choose who directed love and thunder alan that you would like i don't think you'd be on the show right now or or either that <laughs> no or... i would because it would be me i'd choose me i'd direct it well, <laughs> <laughs> well, if that ever happens alan man come back and talk to us about whatever mc hey yeah, if, you. If, if by some provenance i end up like at the top of you know disney like kathleen kennedy wants to take a break or something then we can have a conversation then um, yeah it really, <laughs> well, real quick, if yes. that ever happens, could you arrange a couple of other conversations with some people? But we're not going to get into all that though. You made a point. <laughs> you made a point though, as far as it's easy to enter everybody's yeah, space, baby. Right? Yeah, it's easy to enter everybody's space based on the society we live in, and just the fact that we're global now. There is the internet. You know, I'm sitting here. We're we're all having this conversation. Ain't nobody in the same place. Only me and Dave are even in the same state. <laughs> um, so I'm curious, Hannibal, what you said as far as you see people entering the space of comics when they're trying to make a film. And I know this is something that me and Doug Wagner had a conversation about on his PanCon, which you see people making comics just as a proof of concept for a movie. Do you think that throws off the medium as far as because these people are like and are are doing that, which is throwing something into the comic book medium that, as you said, definitely may not fit. You know, because there there are films that you should never make a comic. There are comics you should never make a film. There's a couple comics that got made into film, and the dude that made the comics definitely thinks they should never be made into a film, right? The creator, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. he was very displeased about a few things, right? You know, that's why he's like, don't put my name on any of that, which still baffles my mind. But how much do you think that affects? as far as just people coming into the industry and trying to pitch a comic just for the sake of getting it to a film and nothing more. I mean, from an overall standpoint, I believe in the same way that uh, a whack MC's verse has about as much impact on hip hop as a, a snowflake in the a, a blizzard. Um, the, the comics that I'm talking about that, you know, were proof of concept that were not great comics and were just done. Try- no. I'm literally the only one who remembers them because I reviewed comics for 19 years. Uh, you know, if you go to the average person, uh, even the average comic book store worker, they'll be like, what? No, I don't remember that book because it was gone that fast and it was not important. It did not have resonance in their mind. They stick to the big things, the events, the the big stream comics. It's hard enough for an in, a, a smaller non big two book to even get a space on a comic book store shelf let alone have somebody be talking about it years later, you know? Um, like, when I think of uh, uh, things that like, okay, 
this was meant to be a comic. This is great. This is something that would work. Like the me you love in the dark, for example, which is weird and strange and amazing and could possibly see life in another thing. Okay, fine. But that wasn't because Scotty Young makes freaking comics. And he yeah, made a yeah. comic that's really good. And that if somebody chose to make a really, really good horror movie, they could definitely take it. But, um, you know, four feet. But <laughs> most, of the, most of the times when that happens, when you see somebody come with their, you know, somebody who's uh, never written a comic before, or there's some uh, big Hollywood name that may be on the outs for a little while, and they do something, they do the book, it does what it's going to do. It sells its three or 4,000 copies and you never think about it again. And that's the way of the industry because our industry is not fed by, you know, new ideas from people who think they're going to just swoop in and do something. It's fed by the big two. That's where the money comes from there. And, you know, people who don't want to acknowledge that can get a rude awakening or they can go figure something else out. And many just go figure something else out. Why do you think, I don't understand why people wouldn't grasp that, that it is the big two. I mean, especially if you look at the films, I mean, look, and, and I'm not saying there are other great projects that are from other, other imprints. I mean, I mean, to, as Dave was bringing up the walking dead, invincible, these are both great. Uh, they're, they're, I, uh, the TV show lost me at a point. I won't lie. I read the whole comic series, but, but, but at a certain point I was just like, look, I don't know if I need this much walking dead in my life. Like, and I'm a George Romero fan from back in the day, Night of the Living Dead, Day of the Dead, Dawn yeah. of the Dead. Like I love those films, but but at a certain point, I'm like, this is just a little too much zombie, right? <laughs> but I understand that's a that's a network just being like, hey, we keep turning these out, people keep watching them. Yeah, they pay money. a lot of money for it. We're going to keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. why why would you not? It's the whole reason that the, at a point when me and Heather got into it, uh, why there were six Deadpool titles in a month, you know, because it was selling for few I read 10 Batman titles in one month. I remember that. It was a lot. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, <laughs> if you're asking the question, if you're asking the question of why people don't realize something in a country where the president of the United States told people to drink horse dewormer, um, if you're asking why Americans don't realize something, I'm going to need to point you to the Koch brothers defunding <laughs> education on a national basis for decades. I'm sorry to say this, and I can say this with some authority, having grown up in the United States and lived and raised children there. Americans are stupid. And that's true. Truth. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Individual Americans can be very smart, but collectively, oh no, oh no, not for many years. No, no, no. It's like the line from Men in Black: "A person is smart; people are stupid." <laughs> yes, sir. Um, very much so. Yes, sir. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, but also, you know, America can't just claim that. Like, there are some real dumb New Zealanders out there. They really are. There's a I'm, lot of I'm Canadians not I'm not, like I'm not saying that I'm not saying that they're all in positions of leadership in the government, but <laughs> um, most of mine are. Definitely. Exactly. <laughs> Personal we have, Personal we, have, we, have, yeah, we have a few. We have a few. Yeah. We have some real diamonds in the rough though. We're lucky. We're lucky. I I yeah. I, I think I think it's more <laughs> uh piles of people that are almost about to turn to dust more than anything else when it comes to <laughs> To the United States system, yeah. unfortunately, I, I, I hate to go into that. Man, I, <laughs> I, you've been, yeah. Hannibal, I don't you know, man. I've, you know, I've read enough, I've read enough dystopian sci fi. Like, those people probably have all sorts of weird augmentations and cybernetics and the blood of virgins. I don't know. <laughs> like, I love cyberpunk. I can't wait for us to fall into that dystopia. Yo, uh, give me the knife arms. Give me the knife arms. I just want hips. What though. you asked for? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, here's something. Here's something. I got a, I got a weird one because we were talking about how comics influence movies. Have the Have you guys seen movies that have influenced the comics? Because like something that jumps out to me is the. Uh, I just got done reading the uh, White Widow. Um, uh, uh, miniseries that came out and Yelena in there is more like the Yelena from uh, the Black Widow movie and, and what's going on in the MCU 
as opposed to just a total scold, stone cold jerk from the nineties when she was first introduced. Um, so what other things do you guys see like that that you can think of? I, I think you have seen, I've seen a little bit of Iron Man, Iron Man, Thor. Um, it, there, there's definitely quite a bit of uh, Marvel influenced by the movies. I mean, the guardians well, for sure. Yeah, the Guardians. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely the Guardians, and we've, Actually, we've definitely seen a shift away from the funny Harley Quinn to more of the, you know, I may be on mess Harley Quinn from the cinematic thing. So we've definitely uh, <laughs> seen that in the uh, uh, animated series, which is so gonzo and so out of control. Well, and Dave, you've probably noticed since Spider-Man Into the Spider Verse came out, look at all the Spider-Man books that are out: Spider Gwen, yes. Spider Punk, Spider, yeah, Ed, like Spider-Man Ed, Twenty Nine Nine, yeah, yeah. Edge of Spider Verse Volume Four. No, um, no, the one that kills like, me. The one that kills me, and I thought about picking it up, Dave, just so you know, when I was in the store last time because I seen it, was Symbiont Spider Man Twenty Ninety Nine, and I know that only happened because of that Spider Verse film because they introduced that character and everyone loved him. Otherwise, you would never see a symbiote. And dude, is Princess still the best use of a symbiote? Man, is that terrible? Did you read it? Princess Deadpool, absolutely, my <laughs> favorite. Big giant dog that eats people. It's great. I, I hope the MCU <laughs> never gets to the point where they convolute with as many symbionts as the as the books have. Because so because, many. Well, yes. of course they will. Every single yeah. one of those is a dollar sign. Of course they yeah. will. No, did, dude, did you, oh, go ahead, did Scott. You, did you see? Did you see the new the name of the new Venom movie? I can't remember exactly what it was, but essentially, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> animal <laughs> um but essentially they're bringing all the it. symbiotes they're bringing, they're all, bringing the symbiotes. all the symbiotes yeah they're bringing they're bringing null they're, are they calling it like you know like venom into the symbiote verse or something n- no um oh, oh is God. it along came a spider no um wait i'm wait. just googling stuff now i didn't even know if i'm in the right spot yeah. they're bringing null i'm pretty sure they because they referenced him at in the end credit of the last Venom movie. They, they, oh, that's right. Sony, come on, Sony, stop. <laughs> I, the I last don't. dance. Oh, no, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, it's called the last dance. <laughs> the last. The last dance. Yeah. Yep. And they're going to have Julia Stiles, and she's actually a symbiote training to <laughs> enter a dance competition. <laughs> <laughs> He dances with a chair. Uh, yeah. <laughs> with with the ability to be Jam- Jason Bourne or Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow. This this conversation really just made my brain hurt. It's mainly because I think I think I said this last night. Or I don't man, I know I said you like I literally picked up a book recently, a Venom book from the library because I just went there and picked up some graphics. Because I do that occasionally, and it was the one right after the King in Black. And I couldn't read it. And I've been a fan of Venom and Carnage for a long time. But reading that, I was like, you know, I'm good. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm just, I'm good, right? That's one of the hardest things for me at the store. Someone says, where should I read Venom? I'm like, um, uh, 90s? <laughs> <laughs> ASM 300? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's probably where I would start. Uh, they got facsimiles out, so yeah, that's 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 terrible, man. Why do you, Alan? Do you really think they'll just? Do you really think? And and man, I don't even want to because you all are talking about Null getting brought into the next Venom's film. So I guess you're right, Alan. It's it's if they see money, they'll try it. But I think that's yeah. a part of a problem is that the film industry doesn't understand that there's. You can make a comic story, especially something from the DC or the Marvel Universe, more convoluted than you can a film. The reason for that is is because most of the people reading those books have a history of reading those books, so they at least have some familiarity with what's going on. I mean, I I understood that Venom book. It just it just wasn't a good story to me. I didn't read it because I was like, this is so confusing. I put it down because I was like, this is this this is not what these things ever were to me. And maybe it's because I didn't read King mm-hmm. of Black first. But do you, do you really it think didn't that... Help. Huh? <laughs> it didn't... It wouldn't have helped. <laughs> 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 
Well, Mages Comics and Games, come see us for all the your latest publications. <laughs> <laughs> talk to Dave. Talk to Dave real quick. I'm telling you, he'll point you to a book you will like based on based on a short discussion because Dave has pointed me to I don't know how many books that from the time we've met, dude. It's 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 a fairly I don't know, dude. Between that and recommendations and just guests on the show and everything, I can't keep up where I got everything. I just want to point that out. But I know you pointed out. I think, hell, man, I think I still got a graphic novel back here. Um, yeah, I know I do that I haven't read that I got the first volume of from like one of the very first times I met you. That's hilarious. I didn't even realize that. But I still need to get to that one day. But that's a whole other point, not here nor there. Um, but you really, you really think... Do you think of the film industry will ever realize with comic book films that, oh, oh, we have to keep them a little simpler than the comics. We can't do like, look, if they would have made Game of Thrones exactly like the books, first off, the series would still be going. All right. Like it, it would it would still be going on right now and they wouldn't be doing House of Dragons. They would be like in season 22 of Game of Thrones if they hold everything, right? And I know they clearly don't tell everything in the comic books, but I feel like they get to a point where they want to introduce as many characters as they can because they're trying to get all these different properties, but they don't understand the more the more characters that you throw out there, then you're trying to diverge everybody's attention. And, you know, a film isn't TikTok. Yeah. To be fair, though, they recently filmed a TikTok film in New Zealand. I kid you not, it was it was soul crushing to hear that that was happening, <laughs> but it happened. Um, I don't think that's I don't think that's the linear future of filmmaking. I think it's just another avenue for some kind of artistic storytelling. But uh, yeah, it was pretty. Whew, oh boy, that was that was a tough sell when I heard about that one. Somebody else, and and I think, <laughs> but I think also, but I think the film industry, <laughs> like as a whole, I think the film industry is wide enough that we can accommodate many, many forms of storytelling and many, many devices for storytelling as well. And it feels like at the moment the main issue is that the barrier to entry for those interesting new ideas, the barrier to entry is so high because it, it relies on money and resource. And that unfortunately is controlled by a select few people, especially when you think about Hollywood. Um, there are, there's, there are international film markets that have a bit more room to move. And um, those, and that's when you see things like, um, you know, you'll see, you'll see every now and then something from, from a, a like a almost like a divergent storytelling point of view will push through into the mainstream like you look at something like poor things or when sin city first came out people were like what is this visual style what is this you know it was episodic storytelling that we hadn't seen since pulp fiction and then people back then when pulp fiction came out people were like whoa 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 is this nine stories what is this <laughs> and anyone who's read pulp fiction they'll be like no no this is how it works you get an interconnected world and you get little snippets of storylines that all tie together and so you get you get things like you know you get things like sin city and watchmen and um films like poor things which is just a wild take on a frankenstein-esque story and it's beautiful and it's artistic and it's incredibly funny and every now and then those push through to the front and just remind the world that it's not just it's not just these blockbusters. And I think even then we have to let blockbusters have their place. I grew up watching some of the worst 80s action blockbusters in the history of mankind, and I love oh, them yeah. for sure. Oh, yeah. Because they were, a part, they were a part of my year. I'd be like, it's getting close to summer blockbuster time. I can't wait to see what Sylvester Stallone tries to do next, but it's probably going to yeah. be silly. And then, you know. Stop then, then, my like, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good. So good. Yeah. 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 When yeah. Um was it when um Hulk Hogan turns up as like a babysitter, but he's an alien from another planet? Like, why not? Right? Yeah, let's yeah. do this. Sub hey, that's and the bourbon commando. Come on, right? 
<laughs> suburban Thank you. Oh yeah. And he does the handstand on the skateboard. <laughs> so good. But you know what I mean? Like I think I think yeah, the, the the main issue is that like of course what is being driven in front of the masses, like what is being you know, the way that the the way that the industry and entertainment industry is being manipulated to cater for the masses, there's a lot of um very broad not too deep bright flashy um just surface level like you know very shallow stories and 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 media that's being presented to people just just to kind of you know sate something very quickly so that they'll want to buy the merch and they'll want to buy the t-shirts and the books and all that stuff well let, let's actually talk about that for a second because you bring up an mm. interesting point about what's pushed in front of the masses that um, the uh, movie American Fiction, the director Cord Jefferson, who won the award recently, talked such about, a great you know, film. Could as we well. have more, which is fantastic. Yes, he like could we have more five million dollar films? But unfortunately, one of the challenges with what people call Hollywood, which is actually a conglomeration of multiple mm -hmm. co companies figuring things out mm -hmm. themselves and trying to stab each other in the back, um, <laughs> is that they're they're predicated on gambling. I'm going to put X million dollars behind this project and hope that it makes X, X, X million dollars more and hopefully win that. And their belief of that based upon marketing, based on analytics, based upon the fact that they're feeding chat GPT half of the things that they're doing is that very uh, basic sorts of things make money on a large international scale. American fiction, as brilliant as it is, will not do well in Croatia. It will not do well in China. It will not, it will not make money in multiple markets that they would like to make money in. Iron Man will make that money. Thor will make that money, and so on and so forth. So they, they think, what can I do to make that money uh, as once? I'll make the movie once, and then make the movie make the money global. And that's a gamble that they put forth with some success, if they have a plan starting in the early 2000s, like Kevin Feige, or if they're scrambling and trying to figure it out later, like now in 2024, uh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, that's, however, a question of distribution. So when you get to people like, say, Ava DuVernay, who has a new movie out, The Origin, that's amazing right now, or if you get to like the Core Jeffersons or whatnot, those films, as good as they may be, may not penetrate markets because show business isn't about being good. It's about making money. It's a yeah. business for shows, not a good thing for shows. So when we look at that consideration, um, the gambling mentality that they have has some success because I mean the companies are making record profits all the time. You see that. Um so you can't really argue with you know the fact that they are making well let me correct that. With the exception of Zazlav who has got the nerve to try to shelve Co Cody versus Acme and Batgirl, you can't argue with some of them. But um I, well, real quick, real quick Hannibal making the money Hannibal, you Hannibal. Be mad. Hey yeah yeah with with that, with that shelving that movie, no, them man, I sucker punch that dude, right? Because I got my boy watching Looney Tunes, and you tell me you ain't gonna drop that, and it's like a modern day Who Frame Rock rabbit, and I'm. But but it's a lesson <laughs> for us all. That that movie was executive produced by James Gunn. That movie had John Cena in it, and it was not safe, and no one will ever see it. That is the clearest <laughs> lesson me. that the studio system gives you that nobody gives a crap about you. Not you, oh. not James Gunn, not anybody. They can write it off. That's why they've got it. Yeah. yeah. For $30 million, a $30 million write-off compared to the budget of the film isn't even that good. So Yeah. 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 You know, it's yeah. funny. So you guys talk about how uh, like Hannibal, you mentioned how you you know you make one movie to see how it progresses with with everything, right? We saw it with X with the X Men, right? It was already tried, and I think that with Kevin being involved with it, he knew he's like, okay, this is why it didn't work with the X Men, right? And so then he took all of that, rebuilt everything with Disney. Now, mm -hmm. it, I I actually I was Paramount watching, first, but yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. So I. I was watching um, a, a YouTube video. Uh, it was either today or yesterday um, regarding about why trilogies don't always work. And a lot of the time it's because the first movie is only given to them and that's it. So when they write it, 
they're writing it for only one movie, right? And then they say, oh, well, here's The Matrix, and here, you know, we get The Matrix. It's an absolutely amazing movie. And then they're like, you know what? It was so good. We're going to give you two more movies, right, and make a trilogy. So then it actually made me wonder, where, when did trilogies actually start, right? So I actually went, I went and, and did the research on it. And the very first thing that became a trilogy was Lord of the Rings. And the reason Lord of the Rings, the books. Oh, like <laughs> the reason. They, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, Lord of the Rings was written as a single issue story, right? So or a single single book, you know, 12, 1200 pages. And the reason why it worked so well when it got broken into a movie was because it was already a fully written story as one. And the reason it got split up was because when they went to print the actual books, they didn't they didn't want to print these massive books because it was going to cost them too much to ship and to make oh, each yeah. one. So they said, well, well, let's split them up and then we'll sell them one by one type thing. So it's funny how watching all that happen and the influence that trilogies have had from just from those books being split up and how it's broken into the movies as well right into you got you got the trilogy books you got the trilogy movies and i think the reason why mcu worked so well is because they took the same standard as the comic run right so you have a single issue that tells a story with little snippets of here's what's going to happen in the future right and like you look at iron man and iron man's a perfect example of it it tells the whole you you get a single movie and then you get the credits and then you get the post credit scene right so you don't have to watch the post credit scene if you watch just a single movie it's just a movie right mm -hmm. and that's why i think the mc work worked so well that's i mean that's just my opinion but but see, I, I would, and yeah, yeah, and I would say that 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 format has informed and was informed a lot by episodic television writing. Yeah, because yeah, absolutely, you yeah. go back to all of those shows we used to watch, and they're like, "Tune in next week when so and so such and such blah blah blah," and they're like, "Here's a little taste. You just saw a complete little twenty minute storyline, but yeah. by the way, it's part of a larger thing. And tune in next week when we'll give you a little yeah. another little breadcrumb. You know, mm -hmm. and it's yeah." And it's like, it, you know, it's like, it's a great storytelling gimmick. Yeah. And, and I think like you can really see it when Lost came out, right? Because mm. Lost was just one big, huge story, but each episode was about a single character mm -hmm. and it was about developing that character's, uh, you know, that connection between the watcher and the, and the character that you're watching. Right. Mm. A few seasons of Lost, sure. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I didn't. Well, it was only, <laughs> but it was but only written that they only had one season. It, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 It don't... definitely felt like someone said to them, Hey, if you keep writing, we'll give you more money. And they're yeah, like, That's actually what happened. But we've, but we've finished. We've finished. And they're like, Yeah, we know. Yeah. But if you just keep writing, we'll give you more money. And then it the was... show got lost, which is hilarious. Yeah. It got, yes. it, <laughs> it was actually only written to at the end of season three. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And, and you, can tell. <laughs> you yeah. can tell. You can tell. I'll tell you, it's funny, Ben. I didn't, and I, I mean, I should have realized this earlier, but I didn't realize it until now. But that is, money, I think, is a great influencer in taking something that's great and running it into the ground so much that it no longer is. I mean, I like can. Like Twitter. Whatever, man. I'm sorry I messaged you I'm on sorry. Twitter. Look, I'm sorry I messaged you I'm on sorry. Twitter. Okay, Hannibal. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. All right. I'm like, my bad, man. I use a lot of different social medias. Half the time, I can't even remember who I talk to on which one because I talk to so many people and not everybody has all of them. And I'm sorry, Hannibal. I won't message bye, you on bye, Twitter. No bye. More. Damn. I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But 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 you are definitely right as far as money running something into the ground because I know when I initially started yeah. using Twitter for this show and connecting with people and and it, it used to be simpler to connect with uh, creators on Twitter to get them to come on for Quest or PanCon or whatever that it is now you know yeah. but but I wasn't talking about Twitter head I was talking about like you know. When they're doing like ten issues of Batman or six issues of Deadpool month, or you know they they look like Lord of the Rings films, good good series of films. Not not really my personal cup of tea. I just I don't know. Like sorry, Alan. Uh, I, but but the Hobbit, like like they they literally seen that. Oh, and, and no, it shouldn't have been a trilogy. It just it it shouldn't have been. They thought you know let's stretch this out so we can make more money, even though. If you compare The Hobbit, it's, it's as big as any of the books from the Lord of the Rings series, not as big as all three of them. So there clearly wasn't enough. And I, yeah, it was. But again, yeah, it's, that, it it's that money is the all. Is it? Does that just mean money is the murder of art? Is that what a conclusion I've just come to? No. No. Because you don't get the Harlem Renaissance without money. It, money has to pay. You have to put money into entertainment. But mm -hmm. you have to also have a certain consciousness about. It. For example, Watchmen, the HBO series Watchmen. The, the first season came out. Everybody loved. It. They were like, "We have so much money for you for season two. They're like, "There's no season two. They're like, "But we you're like there is no. They're like, we understand. You want more trucks of money. It doesn't matter how many trucks of money. There's no season two. There's no more Watchmen. That's it. Yeah. And that's all we ever get. And that's cool. Was that Lindelof? That wrote that? Uh, I don't believe so. I don't believe so. Uh, I'm trying to remember who that I'll was. I'll look it up. So, because that, that season of, of Watchmen is absolutely gorgeous. It's an amazing yeah, piece of work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and that's why he... I remember watching an interview of him talking about it, and he's like, yeah, I'm not doing any more. Don't ask. <laughs> Never, I'm sorry, it was my law. So, right. Yeah. So, so Alan, man, you're in, you're in that side. Mm -hmm. How many people have the moral code to when they realize something is done, you can't just throw enough money at them for them to continue? Yeah. You know? I think it comes down to the context of. I think it comes down to the system that you're that you're trying to make the movies in. In New Zealand, for instance. There is we're in a we're in a cost of living crisis. Like I think a lot of people are in the world yeah. right now, and if from a from a purely cynical point of view, if you can manufacture poverty in people, you can exploit them. And I have seen that happen in my lifetime. I mean, I grew up poor we've we've always been poor and i've managed to you know grow my skills and, and end up in a in a position where i'm less poor uh but in new zealand across the board like we everybody's got to pay bills and you got to pay the bills and you got to feed your family and you got to have a house which means that people who have an excess of money creating the art that you want to create that you want to be involved in have a lot of sway over and you and you have to be real strong to pass it up and it can be tough out there for a lot of for a lot of people who who are struggling it's tough to hold on to that that core especially when it's an art form or something that you re are really passionate about and it can be tough it can be tough and you got to have strong mentors and you got to have a strong support network and i'm very fortunate at the moment that i have that i have support and i have options available to me so that i can be a bit firmer when when really terrible offers come in from people who are obviously trying to exploit me and my colleagues which, <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and but also yeah like i get it people got we got to pay bills people got to make money and you know and then but like now we're delving into like a oh like oh, champagne socialism kind of thing like it's, <laughs> it's a yeah. much larger conversation we all know amazon's um, the devil but damn yeah. the deals are so good yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. but i think yeah and i think to come back like yeah there's you know the industry is always going to 
like you said, Hannibal, they're always going to find that risk, that real easy gamble. They don't want to take too much risk. Um, so, and I, it, that's, I think that, you know, like, like it's, I'm not saying that those can't exist because they obviously do exist because those films exist because they exist because they're made. And the issue is that we need to find a way to just slice off some of that support so that all that other art can be made as well. So that we can have more American frictions and we can have more poor things and we can have more, you know, um, like, I don't know, bluey and, you know, kids shows and we can have more comic books and more graphic novels and short stories and weird artworks, like all of that creativity and art that enriches a human experience. Like we just got to find a way to, to deal with the system that we're in. Oh boy. Hey Dave. Jeez, what was in my coffee? I'm sorry. I'm ranting. Yeah, now. No, it's <laughs> <a while. laughs> yeah. Yes, Scott, what's hey, up? Um, have you, uh, as someone that owns a, a LCS, have you noticed an oversaturation of the comic industry from from the movies since the movie started? Well, to a point, there are some that it seems like uh, you know Marvel always gets bigger and bigger. Um, they haven't had the success for some things. Say, like Guardians of the Galaxy has not had a huge success in the last five years. They've rebooted it multiple times, trying. Yeah. You know, um, you know, I like it, but they they keep they they're trying new things with it, um, and uh, so sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. They even like books like Deadpool was doing gangbusters uh, this last year, and they cut it off at ten because they wanted to relaunch it again because number ones sell more than number twelves. Yeah, um, give me so more they will precious and princess. Just just give me yeah. more princess. That's all I want. Sorry, just, just give me more princess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, your princess is in another castle. <laughs> <laughs> what I do like seeing, what I do like seeing is that over the last couple of years, we have heard of some some smaller books that, you know, good creators went out there, made a book that they were wanting to have fun with. And like issue two comes out and we're like, hey, what's going on with issue two? I just got like six phone calls for this book and then we pull up you know the the news and it's like oh uh eight billion genies just got optioned um no one saw eight billion genies getting optioned for a movie no. um what was not being written for a movie you couldn't make that movie because of all the craziness that's in that book and now it's going to be a tv series on amazon um you know uh stray dogs that was yeah. another one of these just out of nowhere books um that an artist put in his time, you know, and drawing my little ponies and doing what he had to do to, to, to put food on the table and said, Hey, I got a couple bucks. I'd really like to try this weird story I had. And then boom, it happens for him. Um, yeah. And no, so no art, that. I think there is good art out there that's happening. Uh, just, that's getting mm -hmm. some success. I just got to throw out, man, make sure you check out Tony Fleece squeeze uh, quest as well. We got, <laughs> Tony Fleece coming up here in the near future again over on the questionnaire where we're going to be getting into the stuff that he's doing currently up to and including on the note of comics being affected by films, Army of Darkness Forever, which is very interesting because it yeah. takes <laughs> the original, uh, I think it's I think it's the director's cut, if memory serves proper, of the ending of the Army of Darkness series, which is where when he drinks the... Uh, potion and he ends up sleeping way too long like like and wakes up in the future and the entire earth is decimated and that's literally what that story is that tony's currently writing he's writing like what ostensibly a sequel to that it's been really good but it's very interesting that's to cool. see things like that so it's interesting you see stuff like that too where um they couldn't continue it in films for one reason or another but there was enough of a demand to where it was made into a comic i mean firefly is another great example of that jericho yeah jericho i mean there's there's so yeah. many examples where films come out and they essentially the money isn't there and the fan base isn't there to justify another film for the company mm -hmm. for that gamble as you said earlier hannibal hannibal but there's enough to justify it in comic book form and Typically, when that happens, they do fairly well. I mean, Firefly is 
ran for a while. I know that. I mean, I just that's that's a comic I need to get to that I just did pick up the graphic uh, at the library, and I, I will read those. Uh, <laughs> you know, so so it's interesting you see that affect it that way. But it, I'm curious: has there ever been? I mean, I know they do prequels for a lot of the films, but has there ever been exactly the opposite of that? I imagine there hasn't. If there had, like, where a film just started right after a comic picked up. Unless it was like planned, like I said, I know there's like preludes to the X Men films to this that. Have they ever done something like that? Where they had a comic, where where print media gets popular and then there's visual, there's there's film and TV straight after. Well, yeah, and but it's made after after the print media ends. You know, what I mean? mm. in continuity after. Yeah. Right? Like, like the story. Cause, yeah. Because like I yeah. said, that's happened several times as far as films into comics and it continues the story. Has there ever been the opposite? I don't know. No, I can't think of it. I'm going to no, have to put in the Jeopardy theme right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't think of it. <laughs> yeah, I can't think of anything either. That's intriguing. Oh, uh, what? Um, no, that was a side story. That wasn't. Yeah, that wasn't a continuation. <laughs> Alan thought he had I was just one thinking, for a second. Yeah, I thought I had because I, I remember. I remember Legend of the Seeker came out, but that's I w- that's I will that's admit, a side story. There were some BBC. There were some Doctor Who comic that uh, Titan did that jumped off shortly after, or like shortly after the end of some of the stories into live action. I have seen that. Um, it was weird and it was confusing. For a lot of people, but I'd read the books. I was like, "Oh, I know what's happening." Sure, go ahead. Uh, so, but I can't think of anything else. And there was, and those were very rare. I'm thinking of like uh, the uh, Clone Wars uh, cartoon. Now, granted, it was a cartoon, not a, a comic book. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But you, know, you go in and watch uh, was it episode three, and you've got General Grievous running around. He's like, Ugh, and he's coughing constantly. You're like, what's going on here? Well, if you hadn't watched the cart the Clone Wars cartoon, you'd have no idea that Mace Windu had, you know, force blasted his, you know, mm. his heart, you know, and there was no discussion about it. You know, everyone's like, why well, is this big robot guy in trouble all of a sudden? But that's a co- cartoon to a, you know, to a movie, not quite the same thing. Was that the, yeah. um, was that the, 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 the Tartakovsky one you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. 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 The, the short, yeah, the like cool. three minute yeah. short uh, video, uh, which were fantastic, and I didn't think they could ever surpass mm. those. And then the Clone Wars cartoon came out yeah. like later yeah. on, and it was like, yeah, can't get enough yeah. of those. Was the yeah? Was the Tartakovsky one of the one where like Mace Windu picks up a mountain and drops it on a bunch of droid armies? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, from twenty <laughs> years ago. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this stuff from twenty years ago that I haven't seen. Like, <laughs> hey, but if you're watching a show like this. With you know, sometimes things just get dropped, and I like to think it like at like the year mark, everything's free game for spoilers, you know. <laughs> um, because if you haven't seen it within the first year, it obviously wasn't that important to you to go see, and maybe a little bit of a spoiler like Mace Windu dropping a mountain on a bunch of that's that's intriguing, it kind of makes me want to go check it out, uh, kind of thing will make you more inclined to go check it out at that point. You know, so I think I think that's fine, man. But I do think it's I'm, I'm not surprised at the answer that I got from everyone because I certainly can't think of anything that was print and then they continued it in mm. in film in some way. Now I just want to mm. see that happen. I'm curious, guys. Yeah. Are there any yeah. print mediums where you just like see where the story kind of stopped and you just like I want to see that continue in a movie now? Profit. Adrian Pazdar, Prophet, the TV show, love that. Undercover starring Gugum Basara and Boris Kojo, which was this amazing NBC series. I would, I would kill to see more of those stories. Whether I'm writing them or not, I want those stories to finish. That's not what I Hannibal said. Hannibal, right. Hannibal had the, he, he was cocked and loaded. He was like, yeah, yeah, but, but no, but, I love that. but can you think of, but yeah, no, that is, but can you think of any that were purely print? That you would like to oh. see jump into continuation and continue as film or TV, you know what I mean? Like, like something that oh. Oh. eight billion genies. 
There we go. Did that already. <laughs> oh wait, yeah, are... going going on going on the billions thing. It kills six billion demons. That's an amazing comic. Yeah, I haven't read that one. It's from it's from one of the co-creators of a tabletop role playing game called Lancer, and they do they did Lancer and they did Icon. It's very much this weird, um, like. Yeah, dystopian, supernatural, like weird. Um, it's it's very cool. It's very cool. It it features you know over six billion demons. Um, it's very cool. But that is a web comic, and I that, if that if that continues, I got it. Yeah. Thank you for thank you for saying that because that made me think. Lavender Jack, which is an amazing web yes. comic that I love, love, love. I would love to see that jump in the screen. That's amazing. There's also one uh, called, uh, it's about avian people in like a weird society. I'm trying to remember the name of the webcomic. I love it. Uh, that would love to see jump. Uh, but honestly, I'd like to see the Giffen, the Giffen and Levitt's Legion. Oh, I, I, I'd love to see that because that, that feels very unresolved to me. And it's always mm. kind of hurt my feelings a little bit. So, so yeah. Mm. Yeah, the the in terms of books and stuff, there's I've been reading a lot of Brian McClellan stuff, and he has the Powder Mage series. That world, that world of magic and and Powder Mages and like you know like um, Black Guards and things like that's a great world that I would love to see realized in a visual media in a in an in an you know an animate visual media. I, I got. I could, I could think of another one if you want. But... <laughs> All right. Well, real quick, I just got to throw out because you made me think of it, Alan. Um, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right. I read this when I was a kid. Belgrath the Sorcerer. Which... Oh, yeah. Wait, wait. You know that book, Alan? Uh, are you talking about the um, the, the, the David Eating stuff? The what? Was it David Eating's? Um, the Bel the Belgaria, isn't it? Isn't that what? I'm no, Belgrath the dude. It was a, it was a it was initially a three series, not or a three series. Like a trilogy of books, but that was like an offshoot okay. about that specific character because he yeah, David like, Eddings. Yeah, yeah, I read. Yeah, I read. I read that stuff. Wait, what was the the will and the word? Right. Uh, it's it's after the end of the Malorian. Yeah, um, yeah, David Eddings and Lee Eddings. Yeah, man, the Belgaria, the Malorian, mm -hmm. the Shining Ones. Um, yeah, dude. Oh, right on. Yeah, the Elenium, the Tamuli. Man. Yeah, right on. Oh, oh. Yes. Yes. I'm amazed that was known to be real honest. Like, oh, dude, I love Belgrade the Sorcerer. Yeah, I, I love that stuff. I, dude, I, I, there are definitely books that I would love to reread that I haven't hmm. gotten a chance. Like, I read them when I was probably 15, 20, like real early on. Oh. You know, and there's, I would definitely like to go back and reread those because I would love to see those turned into or just. Yep. You could definitely just some great worlds, book. you know, just great worlds that are rife for exploration for other characters. Anything by Tamora Pierce, you know, like you can't yeah. can't go wrong. She's an incredible writer. Robin Hobb has got some great stuff as well. Well, well, everyone else has come up with at least one. Dave Scott. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one that I would think of. But it's already being made. But it's not even a comic. It's. Have you guys read the the Wool series, the the Silo series? There's, yeah, there's, yeah. TV thing? yeah, yeah. If you guys haven't, uh, it's. I mean, it's a book trilogy. Um, oh. But okay. But yeah, it's it's written by Hugh Howie and Hugh Howie. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. yeah. And that thing just blew me away. But if we're talking comics, there's actually new stuff coming out. Um, have you guys read any of the Ghost Machine stuff? Geiger. Ghost Machine was great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, I think that's going to be huge because there's so much to that whole world that they've come up with. And it's like 15 writers, 15 artists, and they're all doing something special. And uh, like, and they, they kind of played around with it, I think, at the beginning. And then they realized that it was working. Right. Dave, Dave you oh, probably know. Yes. So, yes, sorry, yeah, I just, you, I just, I just saw the pictures, and I'm like, yes, I do remember these. Yeah, Geiger, I think, came out first. Geiger, and then, yeah. They, yeah, and the then they had Joe. Junkyard, Junkyard Joe. Joe, Red Coat, yeah, yeah, and yeah. and I yeah. think they stopped Geiger, and then they were like, oh, hold on, we need to take a closer look at what we're doing, and then they re they're revamping it all. 
yeah, yeah. So, um, so I believe we get our first ones at the end of April. April or, yeah, April sixth. April sixth. Okay, cool. Yeah. So yeah, Red week. Coat, Geiger, and Rook. I think Rook is the one I'm, Rook, I'm Rook all about. Exists. Yeah. Look at that but, lineup of creators as well. Like fantastic. Yeah. 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 John. Their uh, ghost machine they had uh, at the front, they talked about their mission statement, and it was like, look, the artists are in, in charge here. We've got to make sure we are not, you know, just becoming uh, a venue or an avenue for people to make movies. These are the books we wanting to we're wanting to yeah. write, which I really thought was really nice. Yeah, I could totally see that in 20 years, them dropping a whole series just like you know, MCU with each yeah. character and then it all intertwining. I, I love yeah, the one that's great. Yeah, I love to see things like that, man. To actually be able to see movie universes get built like the MCU. I mean the Monsterverse uh, that Alan's a part of, I think are probably the two biggest going right now that I can think of. Um Yeah. That yeah. I can't think are there any other like really wide universes going on film wise? DC. <laughs> I look, man. It's getting look. Like, I I'm not bringing that one up because it's in the middle of getting rebooted, and we'll see yeah. how that goes. I hope it goes well. I, the Fast and the Furious movies. Those guys, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love that. yeah. Yeah. I mean, those, yeah. I yeah. Those, those, kinda... those characters are driving cars and facing like Avengers level threats now. Like they're yeah. facing world ending yeah. events. And they drive the car in there. Yeah, they're just like, let me drive my car on a wall. That'll fix it. (laughs) Yeah. All right, let's play my car. You're not wrong, Hannibal. You're not wrong. You're like, give me the popcorn. Let me just. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Uh, I love the uh, the was it the the one with the Rock and and Jason Statham, yeah, Shaw. Last, it was stupid, but I loved every second of it. So. Uh, yeah. I, I was getting ready to say I wouldn't really consider that a movie universe because they're only fast, they're only the Fast and Furious films. But I guess they have had one that specifically wasn't a Fast and Furious film in Hob and Shaw. Yeah, so, building, y'all, they're building in that, they're building that universe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, over, overseas, you know, if you look at overseas markets like Japan's got tons of franchises. You know, like in terms of like that's a, that's a self sustaining industry. Yeah, and yeah, hey, oh yeah. Speaking of Japan, great job with Godzilla oh. minus one. We were talking what? about movies that aren't two hundred million dollars. I mean, for fifteen million dollars, they made that yeah. film, and it won best visual effects. Yeah, I think that's a big wake up call for Hollywood. Uh, to yeah. hope, I hope they get the right message. Um, they won't because it's Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> but. Yeah, but, I, I hope yeah. they get the right message. There was a great interview with um, with Takahashi and Adam Wingard where they talked about each other's films. And it was a nice um, depiction of what we talked about yesterday, Jay. The idea that two things can be true. Yeah. Like, you can have a monster verse, you can have a character you love, Godzilla, and it's okay to have different forms of media that tell different aspects or different versions of that character and that's okay which is interesting because we've started to see it with the mcu and the dcu especially like the animated universes have started to like we've had the what if series you know we've had twists on favorite characters and i and was it was a great interview from the two of them because you go these here are two fantastic creators who openly admit that they love the other person's version of the same character and you're like it's okay to do that it's okay to be you know, well, and I think I think they're they're two totally different stories, right? Like, yep. Minus one isn't actually even about Godzilla. It's about no. the people itself, right? Yeah. And their and their emotions to what's happening to them. Yeah. Whereas, uh, you know, Godzilla and Kong is totally different storyline, right? Yeah. 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 And it's like, and that's and that's what it's supposed to be. Like, yeah. Adam Wingard. Adam Wingard is made is making giant monsters fighting each other. The movie. Yeah. And Takahashi's. Reminding everyone that Godzilla to the Japanese, Godzilla's a monster. He's not he's a villain, he's not a hero. Yeah. But he's yeah. a vehicle for the perseverance of humans in that world. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And I'll say, man, Do we all this is this is turning into a monster to edit. I, I will just say <laughs> that, man. And I got a lot of other stuff to edit, so I've been trying to kind of keep the shows like under 
two hours to not drive myself insane. I hope y'all, and, and you know, I'll be real honest. At a certain point, I wonder if people are like, will these guys ever stop rambling? Or maybe that's what y'all love out there. I don't know, right? You know, a little bit column A, a little bit column G. We try, we try and go all over through the alphabet over here, man, and just and just run it. But, but I I do before because because we're getting to this, we're getting close to that point. And before we get to that point, I want to make sure I get everyone's final thoughts on this particular subject based on the entirety of the conversation that the five of us have had, right? And. I don't know who to tell to start, right? Wait, no, Scott, you start because you're the one that, yeah, that works. We're gonna go backwards. <laughs> okay, all right. I, you know what? I think I think Alan started it out in the right way. Is it is a two way street, right? We we are constantly seeing a flux of movies influencing comics and comics influencing movies, uh, additionally influencing TV shows, influencing uh, novels. It 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 is a two way street for everything and it's just constantly in, in motion. And I think you're, you're seeing a lot of, um, a lot of film directors taking pieces and putting it together and saying, does this work? And kind of lost thought what I was thinking, (laughs) (laughs) but that's, that's why you don't have me do it first. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but no, I, I think I think like Alan said at the beginning, it's a two way street, right? We're constantly seeing an influx of of helping each other move forward with the with the industry. And I think that's key. Dave. Um, so you know, fifty years ago, sixty years ago, when most of these universes that comic book movies are coming from, you had 20 titles maybe a month uh, from the big guys. Um, And, you know, they didn't use a lot of money, but they were still getting them out there. Uh, You know, Batman, you know, back in the 60s was the biggest thing ever for two years, and then it disappeared. Um, You know, but, you know, these companies keep putting stuff out there. They're going to keep getting better at making those things come to life. If you would have told me in 1988 I was going to see an Avengers Endgame level movie, I would have never believed it. Um, I know we had to go through a lot before we got there uh, from, you know, Dolph Lundgren as the Punisher, uh, who wasn't allowed to show that he was the Punisher, couldn't say he was the Punisher, um, to, you know, a a Captain America with a a see-through shield on his motorcycle. Um, And now we're seeing these versions, the the best versions of these characters are showing up on the on in the movies. I'm here for it. Um, and I hope it brings more people into the stores so I can get them to read. And then those kids can grow up and get, I want to make a movie. I want to do a comic book. Um, I think we all need to work together. And I, I love that I can help people find their next favorite read. And, and can okay. I just say... Dave does a dang fine job at that, man. I can attest to that myself just through some of the books that he personally has recommended me. And except for that one that I haven't read yet, I they've all been phenomenal. I just say that one because I I, I don't know, Dave. I don't it's a special occasion. Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't read it, dude. Which is it's crazy as long as I've had it that I have it, but that's a as a whole, it's probably because if I know I read it, then I'm going to end up wanting the rest of the series, and that's that's probably why the back of my brain is putting a delay on that. Something's gotta... killing the children, huh? Was it something killing the children? What are you talking about, man? I've got all of that that's released. Which one is it that you're still holding on to? I son of a, why you gotta freaking pull me out? Fine. <laughs> I gotta know. Oh, Wicked in the Vine. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. yeah. <laughs> See, that's why I probably have it because I know the second I do, I'm gonna want the rest of the series, right? And yeah, so <laughs> whatever. Hannibal, final thoughts? Um, I believe that uh, what David said really spoke to me because I, this really is a golden age that we have more possibility for new ideas to reach people than ever before, despite the kind of stranglehold of in comics, the big two or in movies. The, the big six that control distribution of film, um, that there's been a democratization of tools. So when you see movies like Tangerine or High Flying Bird that was shot 100% on iPhone, 
uh, yet were of high cinematic quality and were able to be released popularly, there is a greater opportunity for uh, us as fans, us as creators, us as a society to look at things and say, we can do things differently. And I really appreciate that about this time. Um, in my own personal life, I've seen that, seeing, you know, I got one of my friends together and we worked on a Dungeons and Dragons book and called Sundering the Nation Beneath Our Feet. And then $54,000 worth of Kickstarter money came at us from that, which it's my first Dungeons and Dragons book. It's my first time doing any of that. So people are hungry for new things. I don't believe that there's not a possibility to do new things. So when I see the, as I said, the proof of concept comics or the, oh, let's just rush this to, because this this is hot right now, you know, let's, it was like this, there was the whole zombie thing that there had to be seven other zombie things after Walking Dead. That's not necessarily the way to go. Um, there is room for everybody to take gambles now. Uh, and it's being shown with, as we've harangued on multiple times, with Zaz Lab and lots of things, the gambles that go poorly and the gambles of people who don't know what they're doing are getting run out of the casino. And that's the way it's, I mean, if capitalism works the way they tell us, that's the way it's supposed to work, right? Um, <laughs> I enjoy I enjoy the possibility of tomorrow. I enjoy the possibilities that lie in front of us. And like I said, watching American fiction was definitely something that spoke to me. That felt like that could have been, you know, one of those sort of a, 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 a slice of lifestyle comics. That definitely could have been done. It was a novel first, but it definitely could have been done adapted in a comics way that would have worked. Um, I like the synergy between these things. I like the fact that people are moving between these different industries. I like the fact that we can all essentially play together in different sandboxes. And I'm very encouraged to move forward personally. Which I know a lot of people don't believe about me because after reviewing comics for 19 years, people think I hate everything. That's not true. <laughs> no, I'm still waiting for your honest review of like wickedness and retribution from Kill a Factor based on the fact that you used to review hip hop, man. I don't remember <laughs> getting that project across my inbox, but you know, I was just, I was just asking I as a personal. I was asking as a personal favor, as so. as one half. I would honestly like your opinion based on, but well, that's neither here nor there. Once again, if my like a personal I, review. Fine. Normally, normally I, I review whatever people pay me to review. Normally, but <laughs> if you like a personal <laughs> review, I'll, I'll be happy to. I'll happy to do that. Man, if it's really positive, though, we can put it out there. I'm just saying. <laughs> Well, again, I used, to, I used to actually tell there were some people that I knew I, side side quest. Sorry, um, and I'll be like, "All right, look, homie, this review is gonna be bad. So either I can put it out, or I can pretend like I ain't see it. But I will not lie. I will not lie." And people are like, "Could you just not act like you didn't see?" I'm like, "See what? I didn't see this book." So, <laughs> all right, nice. all right, fair enough. I'm gonna have to send Hannibal a link and see if I want to put that out or not. I'm, I guess I'm making it public. So you all know, either I got a bad review and it didn't get released, or or apparently you liked it and it did, and you all can see it, right? right. Well, you're I mean, okay. You this is on Patreon. You gotta set yourself up here. Yeah. You know, yeah, hey. Well, yeah, well, we'll figure that out later. Alan, final thoughts? <laughs> uh, similar to what I started with. Like, art influences art, and it should. And creativity should influence creativity. And if, like David says, and like Hannibal says, and like Scott says, if one piece of art in whatever medium inspires another person to want to create and want to create more of the thing that they enjoy to share with other people who enjoy it, that's only a net positive. That's only a net positive. I only got into the job I got into because I saw someone do it and I saw how cool it was and how much they enjoyed it. And that inspired me to put on the stupid lycra and wear the arm extensions and gallop around a room pretending to be a giant monkey. So if I can do that for someone, whether it's in film or in novelization or in short stories or in a D&D game, that's important. Creativity should inspire more creativity and it should co create that collaboration, which is the only way we're going to survive as a species, right? We've got to collaborate and look after each other. Very much, very much, man. Well, gentlemen, it is a pleasure always to have any of you or all of you collectively on the show one way or the other, right? Everybody go check out where they've all been on the past year. You can catch me and Dave doing this month or this week in comics. Usually weekly, we might've missed a couple weeks. Cause I 
mistakenly scheduled a couple things for Wednesday. This might have been one of them, but that's neither here nor there, right? Um, <laughs> I know Scott getting ready to drop another Astounding Tales issue two here in a little while, right? You've got, mm-hmm. are you, well, you just got, uh, oh, okay. Marvelous Look at Tales that. of Wonder. Marvelous, Marvelous Tales, Tales of, Wonder. of Wonder. Why? Wonder. Marvelous Tales of Wonder. Dude, you can you can like smack me when we meet each other for me screwing that up. I don't know why. I have <laughs> like I literally seen the cover two earlier, right? And I don't know why. You all can see cover two. Like, can I show cover two right now? I can show cover two right yeah, now. Yeah, man. All right, so you can see cover two right now too. Astounding Tales of Wonder, man. And I'm gonna or Astonishing Tales of Wonder. I have too many books in my head, Scott. Like I'm literally Sorry, right? You can catch Hannibal. Hannibal. Hannibal's working on that new D and D book, right? And maybe doing something D and D related that I'm probably going to regret the choice of over here, right? We'll we'll see what Factor ends up doing. Alan, Alan, you can catch doing man. What you got? Uh, Godzilla or got Godzilla X Kong: A New Empire? You got uh, the what's what's the Planet of the Apes film? It's the it's the the Kingdom Kingdom, 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 Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Kingdom. I do. There's been so many. It's like which, which, which. What's the uh, word before it? Something of the planet of the something of the. With yeah. The, yeah, it's something of the apes, man. Right? Now he's done. He's also gonna work on a Minecraft movie, which just sounds intriguing. And with Jack Black, it makes it even more intriguing. We will get into that more uh, when it's way closer to release with Alan. That might be a while because I mean it's it's. But if you go check out Alan's quest. You can hear a little bit about him getting his initial costume fitting for that, which is a very, very intriguing tale. If you're over here watching, I do want to thank you for signing up for the Patreon, even if it was just a seven-day free trial, man. But remember, it's just a buck a month. We're going to have PanCons dropping hopefully twice a month if I can keep this schedule right there, or at least will be one, as well as all the pre-show questionnaires and everything else. And there's so much more available. Besides that, look, I want you all to do... A couple things. If you feel like liking, commenting, and subscribing, right, giving it that thumbs up, do that. Besides that, I want everyone to remember, right, if you go and you watch something or read something and you find it entertaining, <clears throat> you should try and check it out in other mediums. You might find them just as entertaining. But if you don't, don't take time to slander them. Just be like, okay, well, there's still this part that I like, and it's okay. There's no reason, because there might be people that actually absolutely love and enjoy that, and if they didn't, it's the dollar that's going to determine whether it continues or whether it just goes and goes away, right? You don't have to sit there and hurt somebody's feelings that that put a, probably a great deal of effort into that, even though we've talked a little bit on this show and probably did a bunch of it. On this show. Whatever. We're not going to talk about Warner Brothers no more. All right. Besides that, <laughs> have a good night, y'all. <laughs> this has been the questionnaire. Where, where's the link? Thanks for checking out the questionnaire. In the link below, yes? I will drop it like it's hot. That's another party. It's cool, man. I love it. The questionnaire. That is all.